All right, today on the podcast, we have Mr. Federico Staxrude, who hails originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, so he's probably a Messi fan, I would guess, uh, but that's a different sport. Yeah. Uh, now lives in Estero, Florida, and uh, he's uh, number two pro singles player in the world. Um, and quickly, he may reach number one. We'll see what happens here. But uh, we like to call you Fed. Is that okay with you if we call you Fed? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hey, well, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you guys for having me. So you're from Argentina, is that right? Yeah, Argentina, one side of yep. yep. And when did you come to the U.S.? I came to the U.S. in uh, 2014 for uh, college tennis, and then uh, yeah, I've just been here since then. So college tennis, you're obviously playing singles and doubles, right? Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. you like singles more? Did you like singles more in tennis, or did you prefer doubles? No, in tennis I prefer doubles. I thought my game was more built for doubles um, and singles. Because I always like to go to the net in singles. Like any ball that I could go to the net, go to the net right away okay. and try to volley. Uh, so I like doubles because of that. And my serve was my serve wasn't really hard, but it was pretty good. Like I could change it up. Like I could do like slice, kick, serve. Like I could change it out the whole time. So that's kind of like good for for doubles too. For sure, for sure. Yeah, being able to change up your spins and location and stuff. Yeah. So I'm a tennis player. Yeah. As well, I didn't play in college, but I played a lot in high school. Um, I noticed your uh, one of the videos that you posted recently, you talked about the difference between playing singles in pickleball. Well, one of the differences of playing singles in pickleball and playing singles in tennis is keeping an open stance for the most part. I really, really yeah. enjoyed it, and I enjoyed watching you this weekend and noticed how you keep open stance for the most part so that you can cover more court. Can you kind of go into that and the reasons for the viewers of why you want to be more open stance when playing? It's just, it's just way easier. It's just quicker to move laterally when you're open stance the whole time than if you're crossing your legs. Uh, I, I see that a lot in uh, tennis players that come in uh, – like this year, you hit the ball to their back end, and they're always crossing their right foot uh, towards the left side. And that, I mean, that's good. But then for the next ball, it just uh, takes you out of position right away. So it's just way better to always try to keep open stance so you can move side to side way faster than if you're crossing your leg the whole time. Yeah, you do it. You do it just seamlessly. So it seems like something that you've been definitely practicing but it's something that feels very awkward, I feel like, for a tennis player coming in and trying to figure out. But I've been working on trying to keep an open stance as I play, and it definitely feels awkward, but working on it's been helping. It's tough. Yeah, it's, it's tough, tough for the backhand side, especially because backhand, I mean, the forehand, you get used to it uh, but right away, but the backhand is tough because generating power without having the, the right foot in front of you is sometimes hard, but if you can do it, then just way easier for that next ball. Yeah, because it feels like that left leg kind of gets in the way as you're hitting the back end. Exactly, yeah. But you yeah. got good power on the yeah. back end. So how do you produce that power? Is it just from building your legs? Are you doing training outside, building your legs and stuff? Always the legs, yeah. Always the legs, and then you know, it's just got a good direction, uh, bending your knees. That's something that I have to work on a lot because most of the time when I miss backhands is because I'm straight up. My knees are locked in and not not loose and down. So that's something that I have to work. Uh, I have to work on. I, I had the same problem in tennis. It's kind of like it just brings. But in pickleball, it's even worse because that wiffle ball doesn't even bounce up. So you have to really get low, especially in those uh, guys' socks. And last last follow up question to that, just because I'm really interested in it. Getting low. Are you staying low when you're hitting, or are you getting low and standing through your shot? Uh, well, in tennis, usually you go up, but in pickleball, I feel like if you can just stay low the whole time, it's just 
better, you know? I mean, it's tough, but it just gives you, uh, like, if you're, whenever you're thinking, like, if you can stay on that aggressive position, then it, it, even if you have to counterattack, it's way easier than if you're, like, just leaning up, you know? And then once you're, like, down, you're just giving up, like, less angles for for someone to attack. If you're, like, all the way straight up, then you can attack you your right hips or left hip uh, much easily than if you're, like, like kind of, like, in, like, a goalkeeper position, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I imagine when I see you playing is kind of that goalkeeper position. I think that's that's a good insight too. You're down low, ready to get any ball, and you get to most of them, which is pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I uh, this is crazy, but I uh, the other day I was kind of like looking at um, uh, goalkeeper drills because I feel like for pickleball it's kind of like you can use a lot of those steps for reaction. Like, because think about it, like in in, a, in soccer, like you get a corner kick and someone heads and then you have to react. It's kind of like that cross court thing is going on and you're just waiting there. Whenever there's a high ball, they're going to attack you. And it's kind of like similar to that. So I was just thinking about that reaction. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Lots of sports relate for sure. I actually saw a video recently of a goalkeeper. I don't know who it was because I don't follow, follow soccer very closely, but he would put a bunch of items in front of the goal someone would try to score on them and it would bounce awkwardly off those items. Bounce everywhere. Try yeah, to figure out where it's that, yeah. So, yeah, that could be good for yeah. fast hands too. We need to incorporate something that, with pickleball that has to do with that. So when did you... Uh, yeah. So, coming, so was your plan in college to get a degree? Were you trying to go pro at that time? Or what, kind of what was your plan when you came here? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was playing tennis, in like high school, I, I was decent. I was never like the top junior, but I was there. Uh, I could compete with everyone. Uh, and then I just decided to come to the U.S. Um, I was playing in an high school, uh, and I was doing really good. I was, I I made all Americans. So I was like, maybe I'll try play D1, and then I transferred to a D1 school. And I really ha- didn't have like the best experience ever there, so. My my motivation to to go the one was to maybe try to go pro after that, so kind of like that motivation died a little bit um, my junior year, and then uh, yeah I graduated and I I wanted to stick uh, to st- stay with tennis a little bit more like doing coaching and stuff and uh, for uh, for re- for uh, visa reasons I have to do a masters uh, and I came to Naples and Naples is kind of like big ball is huge here and yeah. so I just got introduced to it and just didn't stop. Did you know what pickleball was before you moved to the United States? Had you seen it before? Uh, no. What is crazy is that until the first day I played, I had no idea what it was. Like, I, <laughs> I never saw a court. Or, or maybe maybe I saw it, but I didn't even recognize, Thought like, what tennis. the hell was that? You know? no, no, right. Nothing. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything. Uh, that was crazy. And then uh, 2021, this was 2021, and then, yeah, the first time I just, I was playing with wooden paddles and I thought it was terrible. And then when I bought like a nice, <laughs> like $80 paddle, I was like, okay, this is fun. You know, like I can actually hit some shots. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, just starting playing. And who were you playing with at that time? You were down in Naples, you said. Were there some pros down there that you were practicing with or started practicing with? Yeah, the first, the first like pro that I practiced with uh, was actually CJ Klinger, uh, he plays for the bus in the MOP. Uh, so he was the first one that I was like, Oh, this is, I thought I was great. You know, I, was, I thought I was amazing already. And then I play with him. I lose 11, one, 11, zero right away. I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit, wait. this is way different. Uh, so then that motivated me a lot. You know, I was like, shit, man, like I want to like practice and get better at it. You know? So I started practicing and I would play with him like almost every night. That's when I, uh, then I met, uh, Pablo Teles. I met Simone, Brendan Long, Cal Yates. Uh, there's a bunch of pros here. Uh, so it was easy the transition to, to get to a better level because you get to play with them the whole time. So, um, yeah, that was it. Wow. So how long was it until you played in your first pro match? Do you remember? My first match was 
at the end of 20, so I started playing at like March, April 2021, and then at the end December 2021, I I registered for the first uh, pro event. Uh, this was like the World Pickle Open. It wasn't like a big tournament, but um, yeah, that was my first one. And then after that tournament, I practiced the whole December, and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna sign up for all Florida tournaments. So I signed up for like. APP Punta Gorda, APP Plantation, PPA uh, Florida, and then APP Delray Beach. So I play all four. And then the last one was Delray Beach, and I got to the final. So I was like, this is interesting. You know, I, I got a check. <laughs> and then uh, I thought, maybe I can do this, you know, for a living. So, yeah, that's just started. Yeah, and you proved you can do it for a living. Going back real quick on CJ Klinger, I don't know if you got to watch much of or go back and rewatch some of the challenger games, but he was impressive this yeah. last tournament also singles and doubles. Like he, he took control. He's, he's coming up. I don't remember what his age is, but he, he yeah. was a good one to start with for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think CJ Hayden, um, yeah, they're, these kids are going to be great because they, they maybe played other sports, but their real background is, Pickable. So I think that's an advantage. I don't think that's a disadvantage to don't have, like, CJ has a little bit of tennis background, but really, like, he played pickable since he was, like, 12. So, like, look at Anali, like, it's the same thing, like, they have no bad habits to, to race. So that's, I think that's huge, you know? I think that's a great advantage. Yeah, like Dylan, too. Yeah, we can. Dylan Frazier, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing coming from tennis is the, the kitchen for the most part, because we're so used to hitting volleys and we're like uh, stepping sideways as we come in to hit the volley. But then when you're playing pickleball, you have to hit that volley now straight up. So your paddle angles totally changed. So yeah, you kind of have to unlearn a lot of stuff or just speeding up stupid shots that you would in tennis. But it's like, nope, you got to reset that. Okay. Uh, right. Or the swing is too and big. Always, and al- yeah, always being ready for the next ball because in, yeah. in tennis you volley and most of the time it's over. And pickle is like never over, never ending. Like <laughs> never, you have to always be ready for the next one. So it's kind of like yeah. Yeah, I played. So I played five zero in the Red Rock this last weekend, and we played a team, and we play with them all the time. They're from down here, and I'm I'm hitting winners, and I'm not ready for that ball to come back, and then it shoots back at me, and then they hit a winner on me. And it happened like eight times, so we <laughs> lost that middle game and then came back and won the last one. I was like, holy crap, Austin, just be ready. Right. It's the hardest thing because, yeah, you don't expect it to come back. Yeah. That's a good point. So your, your Yola uh, sponsored when and how did that come about? Yeah, yeah that was uh, around June of last year. Okay. Uh, wow. I was playing Yeah, I was playing with another paddle that got uh, uh, banned, so I had to switch. And then... Uh, I just started playing with Yola and I liked it. And then I just, I have my agent and he connected and we just figured out a sponsorship. So I know a lot of people have uh, questions about the new Yola paddle. A lot of people haven't used it. Perseus, I think it's called. The Perseus, yeah. Thank you. So there was the Hyperion that Ben Johns was using and now his new signature paddle yeah. is the Perseus. What do you think of it? Obviously you like it more than the Hyperion. What's the difference? Yeah, it's just I feel like I get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more power with it, and also uh, less dead spots. Uh, mm. I just like it better, a little more. I like that uh, kind of like square rectangular shape. Um, it creates a little more pop in it. So I mean, the other panel is great. I have a great success with it, especially in singles. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to this new paddle and. I think in the long term it's going to be better. But, uh, yeah, just I really liked it. Uh, I like the shape of it, and, yeah, it's great. Sweet. Yeah, um, taking a turn now, when I first was introduced to you, I was watching, I can't remember what tournament, but you played singles, and I'm pretty sure that you played Ben in the finals, and I think you won. I can't remember if you won or if you got second. But I messaged you on Instagram for my personal account. This was a while ago. I don't expect you to remember. But um, I, I asked you what grip you hold and some other questions. But I was curious. 
you were just playing singles at that time, it seemed like, and now all of a sudden you're like one of the top doubles players. And it feels like it's an all of a sudden thing for people that are watching, but I'm sure for you it's been like a, a process that you've been going through. But we've seen you a ton on the singles court destroying people, and now you're one of the top players on the, on the doubles court. And I don't think people were expecting that to happen as quickly as it did. What have you been doing to get on on more doubles podiums? Yeah, I think uh, I don't think I'm top in doubles yet. I would like to be better, but uh, we win, we practice a lot. Uh, we've been this past December with Pablo Teles, especially. We've been just hitting a lot of reps, a lot of reps. I think that that's the best way to get good fast. Uh, 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 yeah, I just I just think that we have to learn a lot of ways. Like the biggest thing for me was how to cover spots. Like if the ball is in a certain spot, where what are the percentages? Like where you have to cover, where you need to cover. And playing with the lefty for me is really easy mm. because I mean that forehand in the middle always just makes it much easier for the left side because I'm playing the left side, but I'm not really like a. I'm not really like a like a James Ignatovich or Ben Jones kind of like aggressive left side player, you know? Like I'm conservative when I get a high ball, I attack, but I'm not like always trying to attack because I have Pablo that can also attack from the right side and has the forehand in the middle. So I can just be conservative the whole time and we can just score way more. But uh, yeah, going back to your question, getting better, like just get, getting a lot of reps and I also like watch a lot of film, uh, studying a lot of players and and getting to know their their uh, how, how their fundamentals and what they do and what works and try to repeat that. You know. Yeah, this past weekend I watched you play. Uh, the only doubles match that I saw you play because I was playing that day um, was against Tyler Long, Tyler Lung, and Callan Dawson. Oh, that was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. You guys came out on top. They had a game point. I think it was 14-12 they were up, and you guys won 16-14. Yeah. So sick. But, yeah, we, we, have... we were up 8-1. Oh, you were? Okay. I only saw the end of it. I literally got there at 14-12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's good. That's good. It was a good match. I have a follow-up question for you. So you and Pablo are obviously playing together all the time. I think that's important to have uh, someone that you're playing with and, like, learning their habits so that you guys don't clash, especially with a lefty and righty, that yeah. middle can be a huge clashing point. But what you said is you're more passive. Pablo's more aggressive. So you're going to let him take over the middle for the most part. Yeah, that depends a lot uh, where we want to uh, also, uh, who do we want to target? We want to target okay. the left side player or we want to target the right side player. And, and depending on that, maybe we let the other one, take balls in the middle. So if, we, if maybe we want to target the guy that is going to be across of me, I'll take the ball in the middle and push him wide, you know? But if you're going to target the guy that is uh, in front of me, then maybe Paolo will take the middle a little more. Interesting. And, but that, that really uh, changes up everything. But the best thing is that I really almost know every time where he's going to put the ball. So I can just be ready right. for the next one. And that's huge in big because there's just no time to... The only guy that can react like that is J.W. Johnston, who is absurd what he does. But <laughs> the rest of us, I, just, I think we just anticipate, you know? Yeah, J.W. has been playing for longer, too. I mean, just tell him he's been playing for longer, so <laughs> you'll get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm interested. Can you just go a little bit further into that? So you said when people are across, so let's say you, you, you're right-handed, you're playing on the left side, just like you are. When people yeah. are across court, they're also on the left side, and you want to attack them. Yeah. You're going to have this guy go at it. Why is that instead of the guy in front of you? What's the reason for that? Uh, you mean to attack off the bounce? I mean to attack that if if you're targeting a player, yeah, to attack cross court. Why why oh, would it be target, this person targeting. rather than the person straight ahead? If you could explain that to the people that are listening. It's a little bit easier because I have the inside out forehand. It's easier to go from the inside okay. out forehand just across than to kind of like cook it, you know, because Paolo will have to cook that forehand and then bring it back there. 
it's just a little bit more difficult. And also, like, if I have that angle, they don't know what I'm going to do. I may, I may go across angle or I can just go middle or I can just, you know, there's a little bit more options that way. But, yeah, we just, uh, that's, that's why we do it like that. Interesting. And uh, talking about Pablo, uh, you guys have been uh, doing really well together. So Minnesota, I believe you guys got second. Uh, and you beat some yeah. great teams going up for that one. I mean, you've beat a lot of good teams. I mean, even just this past Red Rock, you guys were close to to mm-hmm. meddling. Just one team stopped you. Maybe it was a, maybe it was quarterfinal when you played uh, Barr and and Johns. Was that a quarterfinal? Yeah, we lost to Deckel and uh, yeah, that was quarterfinals. We lost to Deckel and Colin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but still close there. I mean, you guys are doing really well together. Can we all agree that Pablo should be in the Premier League of MLP? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's past due. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, he was the next guy in that draft. Uh, that's why he was elected pretty much. He was the first pick on the challenger, yeah. taking out Sam Curry, which we all know that he probably didn't deserve that first pick. Uh, in the challenger. <laughs> yeah, we all agree. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the truth, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be, in, he's going to be for sure in the premiere. I don't know if he's going to be picked maybe third round, fourth round, I don't know, second round. I don't, I really don't know that. But he, uh, I mean, having a lefty, it's a huge advantage, uh, especially for that men's doubles and also mixed doubles too. I mean, mm. if you get a good girl that can play on the left side, then just, is huge too. Yeah. Uh, talking about and he, and he can play three events, you know. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, talking about MLP a little bit more. I think you were the determining factor on the team. I know Andrea Coop and Maggie Brosh all played great. Dylan always does well. You know, he's always solid. But I think your doubles game improvement just from MLP Mesa to now uh, to MLP Daytona was a huge leap. Would you you think that was just a lot more drilling time for you, or? Yeah, actually, I actually think that I didn't play that well in MLP like Tonga, but I have important moments, I would say. Uh, but the biggest thing about of our team was that our girls didn't lose. Like they literally didn't lose. Like they never lost. They only lost in the final. They went four and zero. So starting one and zero, especially with the with the with the single team that we are. It's huge. We just need. We literally just needed one more game. Just take them to a dream breaker, and then we win. We win there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I had I had good moments. I had like that mixed doubles match that uh, pushed us to the final. That was I played good there. Maybe the dream breaker against the Masters. Uh, I did decent, and then that was. But I didn't. Uh, overall, I, I I thought I could do a little bit better, especially playing with with Dylan and Andrea, which they are like top in the game you know i don't know i thought you did a lot better than than you have previously your doubles game has seems like it's skyrocketed in the past few months um in my opinion you're the determining factor but definitely the females helped a ton i mean without without that you guys wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone through you weren't even on anybody's radar to be honest or, or at least uh all all three of my friends you know that i talked to but <laughs> but uh like I, I don't think BLQK was in anyone's top pick. And then all of a sudden... I don't but you know, but that's, that's because we're not like... That, that's because we're not like cool, you know? That's because we're not like... <laughs> because if you put it in paper, we're a great team. Because we can all play great singles. And then you have Dylan playing with Maggie, which is a great second team, if you want to put it. Then I'm playing with Andrea, which Andrea is top, top in the game. And then we have Andrea and Dylan in both genders. That's huge. Like, that's, uh, we can win all four doubles. And also, if we have to go to a single, we're good. So, I always thought that we were a great team. Like, we, we, um, the first MLP, we, uh, we almost made it through without having our full team together. So that's, uh, that, yeah. that was, that was Makes pretty impressive difference. too. Makes a big difference having, having a team versus, a few good individual players. So now, now you are on the radar. Just so you know, with me and with all two or three of my friends. Yeah, you're, 
<laughs> you're up there. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to put you guys on on top for MLP. Is it San Clemente? Is that the next one? I don't know. San Clemente, yep. Yeah. End of June, I think. So I know a lot of people say that your coach has a lot to do with it too. And uh, that's what you guys have shared uh, heard from Coop is that he's just so into it. He's watching film with you guys, helping you guys. What is it exactly that he's doing that's – been helping that helped your team in this last MLP. Yeah. Coach and owner. I'll, I'll start with the coach first. Uh, he's just, he's crazy. He's a crazy pickle guy. He can talk about pickle the whole day. <laughs> uh, some, sometimes we get like, come on, dude, just, can you talk about something else? But <laughs> he, he loves it. I mean, and he's great. I mean, he literally knows everything about everyone. You know, like we're playing uh, any team. I can tell you, hey, watch out with these and that. And then he, wow. that literally happens, you know. Wow. So, because he watches the whole time. So, um, I mean, that was, that was a huge advantage to have him there uh, on the sideline. And also, like, Richie as an owner. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I, I was in two MLP teams that, I think everybody agrees that Rich is one of the best owners and it's not a coincidence that he had so many teams in finals. Uh, he also has the Bay Area Breakers where he's part owner. They won twice. Uh, last year, he won like two out of three. He won the first one. It's not coincidence. It's not just luck. I think it's a little bit also like how he treats his team and how he makes sure that the team, the team is like it's kind of like a family. He makes sure that we're all together. He wants us to practice before he takes care of us. So it's kind of like that helps a lot too, you know? Yeah, uh, just being part of the team. Uh, so I got a question for you. I mean, I think this is going to kind of get a little bit weird in 2024 when MLP goes. Because I think, um, for example, your owner owns, like you said, the Bay Area partly the Bay Area Breakers, which will probably be a Premier League team next year with the BLQK Bears. Is he going to be able to have ownership in both, or do you know how that works? I mean, the same issue with um, Dave Fleming coaching two different teams, one in Challenger, one in Premier. If they're going to be in the same league next year, it's just kind of a confusing deal. I don't even know if they have rules set up for that. Do you know? They'll figure it out eventually. I don't know, but uh, I want to really. What I'm really curious is how how the format is gonna be in here. Uh, I think the the team event is really appealing for the fans. I think everybody likes to watch that. Uh, so I don't know what they're gonna do. I think the six events as like the championship stuff. I think is getting. You can't you can't have like ten events like that the whole year because it get, it gets like there's too many like it's like how many Super Bowls you want to have in one year you know it's like too many of them like I think they're gonna have to come up with like a regular season and then having one championship uh, I think that will be pretty cool uh, like regular season playoffs kind of like NBA stuff uh, but yeah I don't know about that about the ownerships it's kind of crazy same thing about Travis uh, he's He's the owner of uh, Smash. Of Smash, and I don't think Travis, I don't think he's gonna be allowed to play in the Challenger because he's definitely not a Challenger player. You know? He's a Premier player for sure. But Smash, is gonna, they're gonna be in the Challenger next season, so I don't know how, oh. how he's gonna handle that. I didn't know that. Did you yeah. know that? Yeah, because then he's gonna own one team and then play for a different team. I don't know how that'll work. <laughs> yeah. I'm really interested to see what the format will be next year and what they'll do with freezes and stuff. And at what point they'll do freezes, it should be interesting. So can you, we want to get into your head a little bit with your training and what you're doing yep. with Pablo uh, for doubles specifically. Obviously, you guys are training singles together. You guys yep. are both fabulous singles players, always have been. Now you guys have become beastly on the doubles court. What are you guys doing? Uh, what's your training program together for doubles? Yeah, we will dr normally we will drill in the morning, uh, uh, practice reps like dings, then the drops, all the basics. Uh, we might do some exercises that we wanna we wanna practice. Like for example, I I have to work on my forks. That's kind of like my weakest uh, point right now. So I wanna 
really hit a lot of uh he might want to do some drives or we might make some uh, specific stuff um uh, but then yeah like pr- practice in the morning and then maybe in the afternoon we might get we might try to get uh like four players uh we're like to have a uh, like guys like Brandon Long here too he lives here so he might sometimes drill with us too in the morning uh, uh and then we get him and then we get a fourth like CJ and then I always like to finish the day with liver of singles so like maybe three or four matches of singles at the end and that's it and also on top of that do some fitness too and obviously you said with fitness you're building your legs a lot focusing on that are you focusing on your shoulders as well I know with tennis it was a big deal to have strong shoulders so that you didn't hurt them when serving and stuff like that is it legs and shoulders mostly what is it with that yeah just upper body as a whole i have to also uh work on that a little bit to kind of like get a little bit more of put away power i know adam Sam always says that uh that's not my weakness uh, way power so uh, i want to run shoot it's cutting out a lot. The video is cutting out just a can little you still, bit. Can you still hear us good? Yeah, I hear you guys. Okay, repeat that last sentence. <laughs> if you remember what you said. What, what did I say? Uh, oh, I had upper body as a whole. And I was trying to get uh, some more uh, put away power gotcha, with okay. that. And you said, Especially like balls that are, balls that are kind of like shoulder level. And you said uh, you're working on something in specific, and we didn't. I didn't catch it. No, I didn't catch what, it. What are you working on specifically right now that you feel like faults or? Oh, I think for the for the doubles game, the fourth. So uh, oh. whenever you return, okay. yeah. So I, I kind of like want to get a little more aggressive on that sense. I think the best teams, Ben, uh, JW, Dylan, Riley, also Matt. I think they. They have a really aggressive shot uh, as, as a fourth, and they put like pressure right away for your fifth. So that's huge too when you can't get to the kitchen line. And a question we always like to ask our guests is, what grip do you hold, and why? I don't know if you have a paddle near you. Probably not because you're in the car. But what what grip do you typically hold, mm. or do you switch it at all, or what do you do? Yeah, I have like an Eastern grip. Uh, it's kind of like tricky because uh, for like when you're blocking uh, with the backhand, like a backhand punch, kind of like the wrist is kind of like in a weird position. But it's just, I feel like it gives me a lot of, uh, when I have it on the forehand, I can be a little more aggressive. Uh, I can roll it too out of the air. So I just, that's what I use, uh, Eastern grip. When I'm playing in the, from the back, ground strokes might be a little more continental. So whenever I'm in the kitchen line, a little more Eastern, maybe from the back, a little more continental for the ground on the ground strokes but uh yeah that's, that's basically what i do so you do you do keep the eastern grip most of the time so you're somewhere between eastern and continental at other times but that's more yeah rare. yeah from the ground strokes i think i it's almost kind of like a continental grip uh but uh more through the more going to the eastern side than okay than just continental. And do you weight your paddle differently based on singles play and doubles play or it's the same paddle? That's what I used to, I used to do that. I used to have like doubles. Um, I used to have it like a little bit lighter, but then I just, I was like, you know, well, I just have to play with him. I have it on 9.8, it's pretty heavy. I use that for singles and doubles. Uh, but uh, I'm still playing around with it. I'm trying to figure out the best, uh, the best weight for for the paddle. I don't, I don't even know. But I think I have it pretty heavy. Pablo has it like a ten, even more than me. But yeah, each one is different. Gotcha. So uh, when I initially watched you play singles, I this is just coming to me now. But I remember specifically thinking to myself, this guy does not shank the ball. I feel like you're. The purest contact. hitter, I guess I could say. I'm obviously there's are people that really hit it clean, but it just felt like holy cow, he hits the ball so clean. There was never any shanks when I was watching this singles match, and it was just like I don't know, just pure is the way that I could describe it best. 
Is there something that you do for like eye exercises and stuff like that? Because I know every once in a while I'll shank a ball, but it just feels like that doesn't happen in your game. It's just like literally, it's like your sweet spot's massive or something. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's just tennis. I had a nice technique in tennis, so that kind of like moved a little bit towards uh, people. Uh, I think I just have to thank my my tennis coaches back in Buenos Aires. They 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 were really they were huge in technique, so they just uh, taught me how they want me to hit the ball. Uh, I know that in the U.S. it's more of like strength than than technique, but uh, in Argentina it's like kind of like the opposite. It's like first the technique and then we figure out the rest. Yeah, that's cool. That's how it should be. I think. Yeah, I really really noticed that. <laughs> yeah. It just came to me. Like we weren't planning on talking about that, but. Yeah, you hit very, very purely. It's sick. Wish I could do that. Um, so popular topics right now, we got paddle delamination and a couple other things. We want to hear your thoughts on paddle uh, delamination and just kind of, uh, I guess, what you think about it and your experiences with it playing against other players that have had delaminated paddles. Yeah, I mean... I'm not an expert, but uh, I definitely feel like there's some paddles that it's just you got to be careful with it because it's just dangerous, you know. Sometimes it's just like you just you cannot have time to react, and we're not using goggles. It's just that ball can hit your eye, just you lose your your vision, you know. So that's the only thing. I just think it's like safety because I don't think it's an advantage that much because it's good you have power, but also like you can't control the ball that much, so it's just it's gonna fly, you know. Yeah. But it's more of like a safety issue that, than than that, you know. That's that's how I I think of it. Yeah, and there were a couple issues this past weekend with that. Uh, one was Travis playing Tyson and singles. I know Tyson got rid of yeah. it right away. Uh, Tyson is probably the uh, best line caller in the game. I mean, I in other words, I think he's like the most honest guy in the game. I don't think he yeah. would play with something yeah. purposely. But there was definitely an issue with the paddle. You were Austin was standing there in person. I wasn't standing there at that match, but you could hear it. Um, so that one was an issue. And then I think Leia was also calling out um, Davide's paddle. Follow me. Yeah. And uh, but I guess the PPA didn't have anything to test it there on site. So they're like, okay, well, finish playing your match, and we'll test it after. <laughs> I don't know. Do they usually have something on site to test it, or how does that even work? Yeah, I don't know. Like last, in Austin, they had like only Saturday. They have the lamin uh, testing. Uh, they just have to figure out how like how to address this. I feel like we all should go like on Wednesday afternoon, get all the paddles they're gonna use tested. You know, get the serial number, the tape done. Uh, I don't know how much that that is. Maybe it's really expensive. Maybe that's why they don't do it. But yeah, I mean, if there's definitely like an advantage in like pain and power. It's just that's the only thing about Pico. Like the the equipment makes a huge difference. It's kind of like the kind of like F1, you know, like the cars that are better. Just there's no way you're gonna beat a better car, or, you know, like. But yeah, it's, it is what it is, I guess, right now. Gotcha. Hey, can we talk about uh, briefly? I've noticed. Uh, a lot of people more have been talking about PEDs on Twitter, including yourself. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, my my thoughts on PEDs are it, it varies because okay, uh, most PEDs are more for power, but I think in the pickleball game it would be more for endurance, uh, especially in singles. Do you think that they can figure out something that's inexpensive? Do you think it's uh, that's what the issue is? That's what the holdup is? It's probably another expensive thing that PPA maybe doesn't want to add on? Or what are your thoughts on those? I think, yeah, I think it's really expensive for now. Uh, I think it's not going to happen, probably not this year. But also, like, gambling, I feel like we're, like, skipping some steps, you know? We're getting into gambling in, in one month. But we're not even not even doing drug testing. So if someone is someone is in Adoro, no one cares. They're gonna win the tournament right away. You know, like <laughs> like I feel like we need to control a little bit of that stuff. You know, but because uh, because I mean, yeah, I mean Adoro, those those kind of drugs. I mean, they give you an advantage. You know, you see the ball a little easier. You know, you see the ball lower, and like, you see it 
like right at, right at it. So um, I don't know. They just have to for sure figure that out for the future. If if this is gonna become a real sport, like a real deal, like gambling and stuff, I mean, I think you have to control everything. Yeah, you need to control that first before gambling comes into it. And you definitely don't need it because you you already hit the ball right in the sweet spot every time. <laughs> so you're set. <laughs> yeah, but from the from when I'm in the when I'm in the basement, when I'm in the kitchen, sometimes I think it. <laughs> It's I've never rare. seen it. Yeah, it's, it's rare. Uh, so last thought. So I let it go. I just let it. <laughs> last thought on PEDs. Uh, I know you don't know for sure because nobody's been tested. But do you feel like you've played? You don't have to call anyone out. But do you feel like you've played players that have been on something in in these pro tournaments that's that's given them an advantage? Um. No, I don't know. To be honest with you, I I never felt like. Wow, this guy's just on fire! Like, I didn't, I didn't feel that, but uh, I think I've seen guys probably on something extra that gives them like a boost. But I don't think it's a huge deal yet. You know, uh, but we need to be careful. Uh, I think if you don't address it, then it just get out of your hands. Really quick, just going back to delaminated paddles. Uh, I like I like how you said they get too hot. It's like they're an advantage for a little bit, and then you get like halfway through the game, and then all of a sudden they start hitting the back fence off of a drive or something like that. <laughs> and that's playing yeah. playing five zero. I would drive it, and some of the players that we were playing that had the laminated paddles, like a Vatic or something like that, they just fly right. Just fly, and it wasn't paying off for them. It hit me in the chest a couple of times, and I'm trying to get out of the way because it like teleports to you. But yeah, it really isn't that big of an advantage. We were playing. We were playing a team in the first round of this tournament, and they had uh, like these crazy paddles. I don't even remember which ones were. I think like the diamond or something, oh, uh, yeah. the six zero ones. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean crazy power, but the same thing. Like they were trying to make returns, and they just touch the ball, and the ball goes to the <laughs> fence. Yeah. It was crazy. Trampoline. Uh, so that's why it's not. It's not about advantage or disadvantage, I think it's more about safety for the other ones, you know, because, like, the ball sitting in the middle, if you drive at me at, like, I don't know, 100 miles per hour, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, you just can't react to it, you know, it just comes to your face, you're going to hate your face, yeah. you know, you yeah. just can't react. Smack your um, nose. It's just about that. <laughs> okay, that's it for that. Um, we're going to take <laughs> another turn, and then we'll wrap things up, but we want to hear what your, what Federico's favorite thing is about pickleball. Uh, the, the getting to know people, uh, I just got so many new friends and experiences, like the networking is crazy. Uh, I don't know, just getting to know more people. We just, we just played doubles with, I don't know, like Jack Sock in the morning. Uh, I, I thought I never would get that. I think, I think it was crazy. Uh, the guy is super nice, you know, uh, I don't know, just like that, that little things, I think it make, make it great. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, we're living, I think we're living like a kind of like a dream because like we're playing like a, like mini tennis and playing, a, we're traveling around the whole stage and I don't know. It's just funny, but exciting at the same time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so, so fun. You'd never think that you were going to meet one of these main tennis pros, you know, and now Jack's hopefully getting into pickleball a little bit more. Which will be sweet. Um, what no, is your? No, I mean, he's gonna be, he's gonna be crazy good. I mean, the guy's gonna be. He already top. is pretty good. Yeah. Really fast. Watching the bubbly, I was like, I wasn't there personally, but I had friends that were there because it was in Vegas. It's not very far from St. George, but they were li- yeah. they literally thought it was just another pro in the beginning, and then which which it is. <laughs> but it's like he he hasn't played much, but he just has the quickest hands. What what is it about his game that you would say? takes him to that next next level. He has everything. He can destroy the ball, he can create, he can defend, he can he has hands. I think he's gonna be top five in like I think maybe he play he, if he plays full year next year, by June, July he's top five already. Wow. That's he's part of that of that elite group, you know? Cause I noticed a big difference between him and Sam. Him and Sam 
played against, uh, and who knows how serious. Not um, not the man, yeah. Yeah, who knows how serious they were taking it. But Sam was definitely the weaker link on the court. I mean, he's a great player, and he's doing good, but it was like, yeah, yeah, he just showed up, and he just, Jack just had it already. It was insane. But, I, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. Hopefully you guys can get some tournaments in together in the future, too. Ditch Pablo for a couple. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll stick to the left team. I, want, I need a left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's uh, what's your least favorite thing about pickleball? So, obviously, your favorite thing is the community, and it's definitely a lot more closer-knit than tennis, uh, especially because yeah. you're closer to each other, too, and you guys can uh, talk and talk a little bit of trash to each other. It's fun, too. But what's your least favorite thing? Um, I hate to play in the when it's cold or windy. The wind. I think the wind is the worst thing <laughs> that can happen to me. <laughs> I agree, 100%. but no, other than other, other than that, I mean, it's great. I don't know what else. I don't know what like that's crazy, you know. Like because tennis, I will I will line you up like five, ten things, you know. But, but uh, pickleball, I think the only thing about pickleball is. Uh, the line calling a little bit. Uh, I think that's another thing that I need to figure out because it's so difficult to call your lines. Like, it's just you can't see the ball on the baseline. And I always play uh, ball out. Sometimes I call balls that are in. Uh, you, know, like, you don't know. You just don't sometimes know what's going on with that. So that's kind of like something that is frustrating sometimes. But other than that, I just like everything about it. Uh, yeah, I'm with line calling too. It's like. I, I honestly don't know what the solution is because there's other tournaments like APP that'll have line callers and it's like, nah, they can't see it either. So that's not really working. But I don't know. I think it's the best it can be right now. And the, the technology that tennis is using is crazy expensive. I thought it was like, mm. I think they say it was like kind of like $60,000 a, a weekend or something like that. I don't know if they can afford that yet. You know? Right. Oh, I doubt it. I mean, I know there's a lot more money in pickleball now, but yeah, it's expensive. Hey, if you don't mind, we're going to play a quick game with you before we before we take off. So these are going to be some rapid rapid fire this or that questions. All right, you just got to pick one or the other uh, without thinking about it too much. That work? All right. That works. There's a there's approximately 20 questions or so, but we'll we'll go through them pretty quick here. So pickleball or tennis? Pickleball. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Call or text? Text. Dine in or take out? Uh, dine in. Shower or bath? Uh, shower. Breaking Bad or Yellowstone? Breaking Bad. Yeah. Uh, Crocs or tennis shoes? Tennis shoes. <laughs> Indoor pickleball or outdoor pickleball? Outdoor pickleball. Music or TV? Uh, music. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. Uh, popularity or wealth? Well, 100 <laughs> percent. All right, there's a tough one. Pablo Tellez or Dylan Frazier? Dylan Frazier. <laughs> singles or <laughs> that was quick. We're telling Pablo. Singles singles or doubles? Uh doubles. And then uh sweet or savory? Uh sweet. Instagram or Twitter? I think I know the answer here. Twitter right now. Apple or Android? Apple. Android is the worst. (laughs) East Coast or West Coast? West Coast. Disney World or Universal Studios since you're in Florida? Uh, Disney. Federer or Nadal? Nadal. And the final question here is Coop or Brasha? Oh. <laughs> uh, both. 
<laughs> the safe answer. I like it. All right. Hey, we appreciate your time today. Uh, where can people uh, find you? Just two more questions here. Where can people find you when you're not playing pickleball? What are you What are you doing other than pickleball? Uh, going out to eat or going to the beach, uh, playing FIFA. That's it. All right. All right. And last question is, how do you prepare, If even if you can just give us one thing? I think with a lot of people, it's an issue to prepare mentally before they play a match. How do you prepare mentally? I think the best thing for me is just when I'm regripping my paddle. Uh, I just... I don't think about anything. I'm just doing my, my grip. And that kind of like makes me to dial in a little bit. So that's kind of like a nice uh, routine that I have. So before every match, you regrip your paddle, put on an overgrip? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I, I, w- I would like to do that. Sometimes I forget because it's just go immediately to court 5,000 know, and you have to <laughs> run there. Uh, but uh, But yeah. If I have time, I'd like to grip. It's just way better. That's cool. That's cool. It's better. Just help you get in the zone type of thing. Not stress out. Yeah. Do you feel better on the court or prior to the match? Do you feel like you have nerves going in or not so much? Uh, I think a little bit, yeah. But it just it helps me a lot to be, to be nervous. It just makes me, you know, like, okay, I'm nervous. I have to be 100% focused every point. Uh, when I'm not nervous, I feel like I miss a return, you know, because uh, I'm not focused enough. Uh, it's just, I like to be nervous because I, I can handle it well and use it in my favor. Cool, cool. Well, sweet. We've learned a lot today. Uh, last question is where can people find you <laughs> on Twitter, Instagram? What's your handle? Uh, I think it's Federico Staxrud. If you type that, you'll find me. <laughs> you just have to know how to spell stack shrewd. Sí, pero that. ¿cómo se escribe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 guys, you guys will put in your, in your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find him on there. He's not hard to find, but stack shrewd is S T A K S R U D. Federico yeah. spells like it sounds. Uh, yeah, you can catch him on Twitter. Yeah. You can catch him on Instagram. And hey, again, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Next time I'll see you at, at Utah. I don't know which, which tournament is next for you guys. There's the In Utah, there's the World Pickleball. It's coming up in May. I don't know if you're playing in that, but it's World Pickleball. Oh, uh, next one is going to be uh, a TOC for me. TOC. Oh, in Brigham City. Oh, yeah, Brigham City. If I go. Yeah, we'll we might there. go up there. <laughs> it's so far up. It's a little bit of a drive, but it's not too bad. If not, we'll probably see you down in Cali too, because over the summer we we like to go down there. So we'll say hi if we if we see you. For sure. Thank you guys. Thanks, right, man. Thank you. See ya. I'll see you. Right, thank you. Bye.